It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, 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 yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a monster Monday that we are recording 30 seconds after the conclusion of Sunday Night Football. It was Brady back in Foxborough. Brady versus the Pats. We had to stay up. We had to record. And Brian's taking the red eye back from San Francisco. So we had no other choice. We are presented by DraftKings. It is a new week, which means we have a new Spread the Word winner, a new sponsor confirmation email winner, a new YouTube shout out winner, and a new Madden giveaway winner and I haven't even decided what the Madden winner will need to do this week so I need to work on that what I can tell you is that the latest patrons how about Lucas West Matthew Landry Michael Napier unbelievable how many patrons we've racked up over the last couple weeks people love our winning bets on the even money podcast patreon.com slash r T Media. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Hey, Ross. Biggest thoughts, biggest takeaways from week four in the NFL. Obviously, we'll get to all these games, including Sunday Night Football, but any overall themes? Yeah, a couple, Bri. Uh, three, I guess. Number one, I just want to give a shout out and some kudos to Andy Reid for being the first NFL head coach ever to win 100 games with two different franchises, it's really impressive. Really impressive. Sustained success with multiple organizations, highly impressive to me. He's done it with a bunch of quarterbacks. Alex Smith and Mahomes in Kansas City. Obviously, Philly had McNabb for most of it, but he also had to have a lot of backups in there. Feely and... Detmer and Cobb and Garcia and Vic. Extremely impressive what Andy Reid has done. That's one of the themes I feel like must be acknowledged. Then I would say rookie quarterbacks, right? Rookie quarterbacks, much better this week. Mac Jones was fantastic on Sunday Night Football. I thought he arguably outplayed Tom Brady tonight. Even though the Patriots ultimately lost the game, Mac Jones was fantastic. Zach Wilson played his best game. Justin Fields played his best game. So rookie quarterbacks, much, much better this week is another one that jumped out to me. Kudos to those kids and their coaching staffs. Gosh, I'm calling them kids now. They're half my age. Gosh, I'm so old. Anyway, they're half my age and... Their coaching staff did a good job putting them in good position to make plays. And I, I was really impressed, really impressed by all of them. And then I, I guess quarterback injuries, Bry. You know, both Jimmy G and Teddy B, Garoppolo, Bridgewater, not able to play in the second half of those games. That's problematic. It's a big reason why Denver lost. It's a big reason why San Francisco lost. Teddy B had a concussion. They're usually not out very long for that. But Jimmy G said after the game that he might be out for a couple weeks. You know, he's got some calf issue. He doesn't think it's an Achilles. Doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound as good as those shorts I wear all the time from 10,000. The seven-inch interval shorts. With the liner, absolutely incredible. Love the versatile, stretchy shirt as well. Huge fan, as you guys know, because 10,000 makes the highest quality, best fitting, and most comfortable training shorts I have ever worn. Or I'll just tell you guys right now, I may or may not have worn them to a beer pong tournament at some point in September and I may or may not have won both Survivor Flip Cup and the Chugging Contest in my 10,000 shorts. I don't mess around when it comes to yard games or drinking games. I put on the best workout shorts there are. 10,000 is offering our listeners 
15% off your purchase. Go to 10,000.cc and enter code Ross Tucker to receive 15% off your purchase. That is 10,000.cc and enter code Ross Tucker. It's awesome. Tux takes. The New York Jets get their first win thanks to Randy Bullock missing a game tying 49 yard kick in overtime. Jets escape with a 27 24 victory. And really, Bry, the Jets won this game in my mind in the first half when the Titans kept getting into the red zone and Tannehill kept getting sacked on third down. And the Titans had to settle for field goals. It was 9 nothing, but those were wins for the Jets. If you're the Titans, you cannot allow it to be 9 nothing at that, at that point. I thought the Titans' offensive line struggled to protect Tannehill throughout. It's unbelievable how many Titans fans were mad when I didn't say that their offensive line was elite. Guess what? They're not. They're not elite. No A.J. Brown or Julio Jones certainly did not help. Uh, But Zach Wilson started to make big plays, big-time plays deep down the field. And really, if you're the Titans, I mean, you can't settle for field goals, but you also can't let Zach Wilson get those big chunk plays down the field. I mean, I I am kind of stunned that the Titans lost that game. That's a bad look in my mind for Mike Vrabel. Really bad look. Tux takes. Five touchdowns for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs beat the Eagles 42-30. And you already stole my thunder by mentioning about Andy Reid. So congratulations, Andy Reid, once again, becoming the first head coach to win 100 games with multiple teams. Yeah, and here's the deal. The Chiefs didn't punt once. The Chiefs didn't even settle for a field goal once. Mahomes threw one interception. Other than that, touchdown, 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 touchdown. The whole team was really in the zone. But if I had to pick one in the zone player this week, I'm going with Tyreek Hill. 11 catches, 186 yards, three touchdowns. That is just an absolutely monstrous day for a wide receiver. He was in the zone all week long, all day long. He's the DraftKings in the zone player presented by AutoZone. I mean, they couldn't cover him. I really think he could have had even more yards and more touchdowns if the Chiefs really wanted him to. But even so, on six series where they didn't get intercepted, He scored touchdowns on half of them, including a late one. He's just incredibly impressive. He really is. You know, my brother-in-law and his family went to the game. I said, wait till you see how fast Tyreek Hill is. Well, he put on a show for them. He is my in-the-zone player of the week presented by AutoZone with those absolutely ridiculous stats. And they needed him because the Eagles played well. They needed. Tyree Kill to have that kind of performance. It wasn't great right before the game for the Eagles because you find out Lane Johnson's out due to a personal matter, which uh, I don't know what that is, but that doesn't sound good to miss a game. So hopefully everything's okay for Lane. But the revamped offensive line actually played pretty well for the Eagles. Jalen Hurts had good stats. I thought Jalen Hurts had a nice game. But, you know, he's still... Uh, missed a wide open Zach Ertz for a touchdown. He still was staring at the rush at times. Um, could have had a really bad interception at the end of the first half that he just kind of threw it up for grabs. He missed Greg Ward for a touchdown. He had a fumble at the end of the first half. So I guess what I'm saying about Jalen Hurts is a lot of room for improvement there. That's the whole Eagles team. Still way too many penalties, costly penalties for the Eagles in this game. There were some clock management issues as well, delay games, and then a timeout to kick a field goal. Not real good. But I will say this. I like the game plan a lot better. 
They got the ball out quickly to the running backs, receivers, tight ends. Goddard had a nice day. Devontae Smith, Kenny Gainwell. Some really positive signs for the Eagles if you're an Eagles fan. Uh, but ultimately, uh, it was just too much Mahomes. And the Eagles, they couldn't even hold him to a field goal. They could not even hold him to a field goal other than the one Eric Wilson interception. I already mentioned Tyree Kill as the auto zone in the zone player of the day. Tucks takes. Trayvon Diggs, two interceptions in the Cowboys' 36-28 win over the Carolina Panthers. He's an absolute stud, man. I mean, he's playing as well as any corner in the NFL right now. He's putting the time in during the week. He's trusting it, and he's he's going. He's breaking on balls. He is a difference-making player. You know, the Cowboys actually ran the ball very well with both Zeke and Pollard, the Carolina Panthers came into the game with this big, you know, reputation as a run defense, and the Cowboys ran it right down their throat. Even Dak ran the most he has so far this year, looked very athletic in doing so. Sam Darnold had a couple touchdown runs, but he also had those costly interceptions. Ducks takes. Giants come back from being down 11 points. They force overtime, wind up winning in New Orleans, 27-21. Both the Titans and the uh, Saints are going to really look back and regret these losses. These are bad losses, really bad. John Ross beats you on a deep post. John Ross, of all people. And the difference in this game, too, is the Saints were up 21-10. Taysom Hill had a couple of... Bad man touchdown runs that my buddy Kyle Brandt might show on angry runs at Good Morning Football. But kudos to Joe Judge and the Giants, their resilience. They came back. You know what they did? They got the ball to Saquon in space. The dude is electric when they get him in space. Danny Dimes, I thought, played really well again. Another, I think that's what, three games in a row Daniel Jones has played well. Saints ran the ball well, but they kind of bogged down in the fourth quarter. They kind of choked when they had the lead. They didn't throw the ball to Camaro once, I don't think, and it's a costly overtime loss for them. Ducks takes. Kudos to Cleveland's defense. They stepped up in their 14-7 to win over the Minnesota Vikings. Well, so first of all, the Browns gave up absolutely nothing after allowing that Justin Jefferson touchdown in the first drive. I mean, the first drive, Kirk Cousins, who's been on fire, and the Vikings, they just go flying down the field. Cousins is letting it rip. They score a touchdown. You think, oh boy, Cousins is on fire. After that, they got nothing. I mean... Uh, even Owusu Koromoa for the Browns had a big day. Miles Garrett again. You know, great sign for the Browns to win on the road against a team I think is pretty good, even though Baker Mayfield didn't play very well. I mean, Baker Mayfield played poorly, I would say, including missing that wide open throw to Odell Beckham Jr. late that would have sealed it. would have been a, a game-clinching touchdown. I really give the, the Browns defense. That's back-to-back -back stellar performances. Tucks takes. Detroit remains winless after a much better performance from Justin Fields. Bears over the Lions 24-14. Well, you're right. Fields did make some incredible throws and deserves a lot of credit for that. Early on, though, it was the David Montgomery show. It was the David Montgomery and the Bears defense show. David Montgomery is a bad man. Uh, both of his touchdowns were very physical, but now it looks like he hurt his knee. I don't know how long he's out, but that would not be good for the Bears. The Lions' first three times they had the ball, Bry, they had goal to go and got no points out of it. You know how hard that is to do? Goal to go your first three times and no points. Even when the Lions are down 10 late, they had like a fourth and two, and Dan Campbell goes for it. 
you have to kick the field goal there to make it a one score game in that situation. I, I just, that makes no sense to me to make it even worse. Romeo Aquara tore his Achilles, just a bad, uh, I, I thought that was a, uh, a winnable game for the Lions that they kind of yacked. They kind of choked it away again. Ducks takes. Bills blank the Texans 40 to nothing. Buffalo now has scored at least 35 points in three straight games. Well, I mean, Davis Mills and the Texans just had a horrific outing in the rain. Felt like the rain was only in Buffalo and then New England today. But Davis Mills and the Texans' offense was terrible. They had, like, negative passing yards in the first half. He finished with four interceptions. I mean, the Bills won 40 to nothing, and they had to settle for, like, four field goals. They they got bogged down in the red zone a number of times. It could have been way, way worse in that bad weather. Tuck takes. Colts win their first of the season, 27-17, over the Dolphins, who have now dropped three straight. You know, Bri, that could have been one of the other themes of the day, which is just teams getting their first win. Jets, Giants, Colts. That's You know, I should have seen that coming a little bit more. You just don't see that many 0-4, 0-5, 0-6 NFL teams. It just doesn't happen. They get a win, and they got on the day. Colts defense played more like we expected them to play this year as Jacoby Brissett, their former teammate, had a rough day. Jonathan Taylor had a big day with the, for the Colts on the ground. Wentz took care of the football. That's really what the Colts thought their formula would be this year. Wentz takes care of the ball, makes a few plays. Jonathan Taylor, you, you, you ride the run game in the O-line, and you get a really good defense. That's what they thought it would be. Tucks takes. Taylor Heineke hit J.D. McKissick with a 30-yard touchdown with under a minute left to play. Washington comes from behind, beats the Atlanta Falcons 34-30. to Well, Taylor Heineke is gutsy and or fortunate. I mean, the one touchdown throw to McLaurin, he just totally threw that up for grabs. It worked out for him. Uh, Washington's defense, still not what it was. Brandon Sheriff suffered a knee injury. It feels like he gets hurt every year, unfortunately. But Heineke just keeps coming, man. I'm telling you, Heineke reminds me of Fitzpatrick. He just keeps coming. He just keeps playing. Even after the questionable Chase Young roughing the passer penalty, even after Cordero Patterson went hog wild, on the Washington football team, Ron Rivera's bunch still found a way to get a win and get to two and two and kind of stay in this thing in the NFC East. Really impressive victory for them. Tux takes. Russell Wilson earned his 100th career regular season win as the Seahawks knock off the Niners 28 to 21. Right. I already mentioned Jimmy G getting hurt. You know, this is kind of a crazy game. The, the Niners were looking awesome early in this game. They score a touchdown. Um, you know, Jimmy had a bad interception, but the Niners were moving the ball. The Seahawks had five three and outs, five to start the game. But then Russell Wilson made some great plays. Alex Collins had a nice game. How many times have the Seahawks signed Alex Collins back? to come back and play, and he's done a nice job for them. But the Niners should have had a bigger lead in the first half. Then Jimmy's out. Trey Lance is talented, but was not real good throwing the ball. He, he threw the ball one time to a wide-open Debo Samuel that makes his stats look a little bit better. 49ers were horrible on special teams. Robbie Gold gets hurt in pregame warm-up, so they had their punter, Wisnowski kicking field goals and extra points. And then Trenton Cannon killed him on special teams. Just not good. So we got to talk about something that usually is good, Bri. How was the press box food? Press box food did not disappoint at San Francisco as it never does. Uh, omelet station, Ross. Oh. Omelet station. That was good. Uh, well, oh, okay, okay, Bri. This is important. Yeah. Yes. 
What did you put in your omelet, Bri? Well, I have to full disclosure, and I this I I I made a, a, a terrible mistake. I had breakfast before I went to the stadium, and I will never do that again in Los Angeles or San Francisco. So I wasn't even that hungry for for an omelet. So I waited a little while. The line was long. So I went and I went the more of the, the lunch route with grilled chicken, roasted vegetables, a little penne pasta with some cream sauce, uh, tons of candy, lots of desserts. And Ross, if you give me the large boxes of peanut M&Ms, you get an A. Nice. All right, Brian, what would you have put in your omelet? What would I have put in the omelet? Yeah, any probably, topping I'd... possible. What would you put? What would you put in your omelet? Uh, I would have definitely got mushrooms, some ham, and probably spinach and tomatoes. Okay. Mushrooms, totally unnecessary. Ham and spinach are good. Um, cheese, obviously, well, of course, right? Cheese. Yeah, I, did, I didn't mention that, but that's kind of a given. Okay. But that's like saying I, I don't, don't put eggs I in I don't have a huge too. problem with tomatoes. Um, I just have bad acid reflux. My problem is I don't know why as a society, because like even University of Buffalo had subs on Saturday at the college game I did. Why have we decided as a society to put tomatoes on a sandwich? Like that should be a la carte. A lot of people don't need or want that. That should not be standard. And well, also, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Also, mayonnaise? Deep. No, no, on the mayonnaise. You no, be. I, I love you be, but they had mayonnaise. You can easily have mayonnaise and mustard packets right there. You don't. You don't. You don't put the mayonnaise and the tomatoes on the sub. I had to get rid of the one roll where it had the mayonnaise on it. Get rid of the tomato. So I, I, I usually do that anyway to try to save some calories. I just kind of go like a. What do you call that, Brian? Like a half sandwich, like a six inch? No, no, no. Just like the like the bottom half of it, like almost like a like a tuna melt kind of deal. Like you like can just put it faced? in the open face. Yes, open. Fa there you go, Brian. I go open faced a lot because I'm crazy healthy. By the way, anytime I say I'm crazy healthy, it's a joke. I'm not. I will say this before the game, the CBS crew meal. I posted this on social media at Ross Tucker NFL, Twitter, and I don't know if I put it on Instagram or Facebook, but they had like, I don't know what the difference is. I don't know if they were calling it monkey bread or French toast, but it was like, it was like French toast, but like a, just a tiny bit of syrup. It would, Bri, I had so much of it. It was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Big fan. Cause I don't, I don't usually eat a lot of like bready type things like that. A lot of carbs, but it was, it was delicious. Tuck steaks. You were going to say something about tomatoes. Oh, well, I was just going to say that it's easy to take off the tomato from the sub rather than everybody digging in and touching the tomato and, uh, you know, if it's on a separate platter. So it's much easier to put it on there and take it off. I agree with you on the mayonnaise though that they shouldn't put it on. That's more of a preference, but I think you can just take the tomato off because you wouldn't want it the other way. You wouldn't want a whole big tray of tomatoes and then they kind of look nasty after a while. How about just no tomatoes? No. How about just none of the don't, above? It's not on it or it's not on the side. Loving community. How about BYOT? If you want tomatoes, BYOT. You know, instead of tomatoes, let's make guac. Okay, let's make avocado. Let's make that like the standard on everything. Everybody likes avocado. Some people don't like mustard. Some people don't like mayonnaise. Let's make avocado the standard sub topping. No tomatoes, no mayonnaise, no mustard, just avocado. Who says no to that? Nobody. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. We finally agree on something. All right, let's move on to the next game. It's the Cardinals. They improved to 4-0 after defeating the Rams, 37-20. Yeah, we'll see what the Raiders do Monday night, but I think there's a pretty good chance the Cardinals are number one in the official NFL power ratings that they have commissioned me to do every Tuesday on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Kyler Murray is incredible. 
I think Kyler Murray against Lamar Jackson would be like the most entertaining game. Those two guys, unreal. Cardinals defense rose the occasion several times, including on the goal line. Sony Michelle had a costly fumble. Stafford threw a pick. Chase Edmonds, who grew up like a mile and a half from where I am, am right now, is a total stud. A.J. Green making plays as well. Cardinals, that was a very impressive win. Not surprised. I thought the Rams would still be basking in the glow of beating the Bucks. Tux takes. Two TDs for Randall Cobb and the Packers beat the Steelers 27-17. Bad news for the Packers is Zadarius Smith had a back surgery. He'll be out a while. I doubt we'll see him back because I think he probably knows with his salary they want to get rid of him if they can anyway. So he's smart enough to realize that. Other than that, you know, I thought the Steelers got a raw deal on the blocked field goal for the touchdown. And I think that it could have been a different game if, if they didn't get that. I don't think Hayden and Fitzpatrick were offsides. But then again, there was a clear trip on T.J. Watt. They picked up the flag. And honestly, the Steelers don't deserve to win. The Steelers throwing the ball well short of the line to gain on fourth down, it's an epidemic, Bri. It's an epidemic, and I cannot handle it anymore. I cannot take it. I know Steelers fans are passionate and loyal to your football team, but I also know you're passionate and loyal to to your car, maybe you should put the focus there. October is fall car care month. FCCM, which means AutoZone, is here to help you with your car's off-forgotten upkeep and cleaning. Prep your ride this fall and help your vehicle be at its best for the fall season and the winter, of course. I go all in in the fall because I know before the weather comes and because I travel so much in the fall, I want my car to be ready to go. Headlights, cabin air filters, you know, no matter what the task is, AutoZone is here to help. Oil change before the cold weather hits. Head to any of their 6,000 stores nationwide for free services, excellent products that help you take care of your car and get that job off your checklist. They have same-day pickup. Next day delivery. It's pretty incredible all the options AutoZone has. So this fall car care month, show your car you care and start by shopping your way at AutoZone.com. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Tux takes. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens beat the Denver Broncos 23-7 at Baltimore. 43rd consecutive game with at least 100 yards rushing. That ties a record with the Steelers back from the uh, mid-70s. Yeah, and they're going to break that record. John Harbaugh is going to see to it. It was important to them. They went for the record late in the game. They wanted the 100 yards. I kind of like that John Harbaugh does stuff like that. I kind of like that Lamar Jackson keeps giving Hollywood Brown chances because Hollywood delivered. He had the catch of the day laying out for a bomb from Lamar. You know, after Teddy Bridgewater had that concussion, it was kind of over. Drew Locke wasn't about to get it done against the Ravens' defense, not with both offensive guards out. Uh, the Ravens controlled this game and the action for the most part. You know, the shame of it is Denver's defense really played well. Denver's defense really did a nice job, but the offense just didn't do anything. Tux takes. And last, but definitely not least Tom Brady goes back to Foxborough Bucks win 1917 and as Al Michael said on NBC Tom Brady has won more games this year in Foxborough than the Patriots have he's going going back back to Foxborough Foxborough anyway uh Gronk had fractured ribs we found out so he didn't play that kind of stunk I thought Brady was a little erratic in the first half he overthrew a bunch of guys there were some dropped balls throughout the game, especially by the Bucs. Missed field goal early. He did break Drew Brees' all-time record. Uh, Richard Sherman was kind of getting abused in the first half. I thought Mac Jones was tremendous. Thankfully for the Bucs, Antoine Winfield had an interception and forced a fumble. 
The Bucks finally got a touchdown drive. Only one of them, though, primarily on the ground. They needed suck up to make four field goals to win the game. Mac Jones, I thought Mac Jones arguably outplayed Brady. Although Brady, you know, we're singing a different tune if Antonio Brown catches that ball in the end zone on the last drive. That was a perfect throw from Brady, like it always is. But A.B. dropped it. Um, and then the Bucks or the, the Patriots got into field goal range. And Steve Fezzik, my even money co-host, going crazy that they tried that 56-yard field goal. He thought they should go for it. Now, uh, Folk had plenty of distance. He just hit the upright, and the Bucks win 1917. <clears throat> I can I can really see both sides there. I mean, I don't know what the stats are on whether or not yet. I don't know what the stats are. I'd love to see the odds on Folk making that kick or not. He had made like a million in a row, as well as. Mac Jones making the first down or not. So I think that was interesting. Ultimately, you missed it. Brady wins. And as I joked on Twitter, I guess this means the Patriots screwed up by letting Tom Brady leave. Shout outs. Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com. Uh, we will have the Even Money podcast the College Draft Podcast, and a Power Rankings Tuesday all on Tuesday. Hopefully you uh, West Coasters listen to this tonight. Hopefully the uh, the folks across the pond get this for their morning commute. I know you guys like that. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. you got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109WITHIT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.